Hey everybody, in this tutorial we're going to be talking about how to use the decal tool as part of the Substance Super Tools content pack. Uh, if you don't uh, have this, I'll provide a link in the description below where you can go and purchase it from the content store. Um, so basically the decal uh, tool allows you to kind of blend a number of different uh, materials together into the same uh, substance material. And we'll talk more about that as we go along. But on the screen right now, I just have a simple uh, wall you can see right here, a uh, simple uh, plain, flat plane. If I go to my scene manager, you can see I have a wall here. I can go to uh, wireframe mode. You can see it's not very high poly. It's only 1600 right now. Selected poly 1600 there. So we'll just go back to uh, normal uh, mode here, normal shading. And what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead right away and apply our decal uh, substance power tool. So I'm going to go to the content tab under media. You'll find materials and the Substance Super Tools uh, folder right here once you purchase that content pack. And there'll be this handy little layer decal tool that you can simply click and drag onto your uh, plane. But first I'm going to change the shader type from traditional to PBR. So we're going to use a PBR workflow here. And I'm going to click and drag that decal uh, tool right on there. And we're going to have a basic uh, gray plane surface. Okay, so all this stuff has just uh, been filled out. You see the little Substance Flame in the bottom left there, like Rhythmic Flame indicating that we are indeed now using a substance. So the cool thing about this decal tool is if we go down uh, to, uh, to the bottom here, you can see, let's just make our strength full here. Oops, that's the displacement map. Okay, never mind. We don't need to worry about displacement. Okay, uh, so let's go down here rather to substance. Okay, you can use the M hotkey to get down here faster. And uh, there's a number of different um, sections here. There's base, decal one to four. And you can basically assign a different material to each one of these. And this is what we're going to be doing in this tutorial. So I'm going to go to the base one first. We're going to apply our base uh, texture. And I'm going to just click on the base color, a uh, little texture channel here. Okay, and I'm going to go ahead and uh, to this folder here. I'm just going to apply our base brick here. So I have a number of different textures here. Uh, the D stands for diffuse, displacement, uh, metallic, N for normal, R for roughness, A for AO or AO for AO, I guess, ambient occlusion. I'm just going to go ahead and apply these to their respective uh, texture channels here. Okay, so normal map, and we'll just go ahead and keep on doing that. Uh, we don't have any emissive, uh, nothing glowing in this. So we can just replace the roughness map with our uh, roughness map here. And uh, metallic, I don't think there's a metallic one, is there? Yeah, well, it's just the same. It's just a black one. Okay, and AO, ambient occlusion. We'll throw that in there as well. And height, I believe we have a height map. Yep. This, uh, otherwise known as the displacement map, okay? All right, so we have all these texture channels loaded up here. So what we can actually do is we actually we can actually go into our tweak section here and tweak a number of different parameters. So let's go ahead and do that. So this color, you know, like your typical luminosity, color, uh, hue, saturation, all that stuff. There's also normal intensity, which will increase or decrease the, uh, you know, normal intensity of your bricks, as you can see right here. We can flatten them out just like that or, you know, pump up the intensity to maximum levels there and get some really you know, funky looking texture there. We don't need to worry about the emissive stuff. The roughness, we can change the luminosity, you know, to make it a bit more rough, okay? Or decrease luminosity to make it a bit shinier, okay? And same thing with the metallic. Lumino you know, make it more metallic uh, by increasing the luminosity there. We'll just kind of leave it, uh, you know, where it is, since it's not a metallic uh, surface by any means. It's a, a brick surface. Uh, we can also adjust the ambient occlusion. Uh, the height is one that you can really kind of mess around with pretty cool. Uh, if we increase the contrast, you'll see we'll get some more, you know, uh, kind of like uh, displacement in the certain areas there. And luminosity, we'll just kind of bring that forward as well. So luminosity, take a look at it from the side a bit more and take the contrast uh, to the midsection mid there. So luminosity will kind of bring it forward. And the contrast is what kind of really extrudes those bricks a bit more. So you want to find a happy balance between those two. Okay, just try not to make it too much, otherwise it'll kind of get a little bit too distorted. And uh, I'm going to bring that down a tiny bit. All right, you just want to, you know, add some uh, feeling of 3D depth onto the to the brick surfaces there. And I think we've uh, we've achieved that. You can use your forward slash key to, uh, um, you know, move your key light around and kind of see the different angles of the, you know, the shadows on the on the little brick. Uh, a little bricks there as part of our wall. Okay, and uh, okay, let's go back to materials here. Once I do that, I have to go back into uh, my base here. Into the tweaks, okay. And okay, so then there's the opacity. We don't need to worry about that right now. And the transform will actually deal with that in uh, a couple sections from now. So let's go ahead and close down the tweak. 
Let's close down our base here and let's load up decal one. Okay, so decal one, I'm going to load up a concrete surface, kind of like a painted concrete surface on top of the uh, brick wall that we have here. So I'm gonna go ahead and throw in my base color here. So I'm gonna go to a different folder here. We have this concrete folder and let's go ahead and load that in. So the diffuse right here. Okay, so once we do that, it'll just kind of basically go right over top of the base, okay? We don't need to worry about this because we can blend it. We can also use masks, which is what we're going to be doing in this uh, situation here. So I'm going to load in the normal map here, and there is a roughness. The normal just kind of gives us that uh, texture there, and the roughness. Okay, and I think we have an ambient occlusion there. Okay, so I add that in the AO. And this one actually has a mask, okay? So what we're going to do is we're going to mask out certain parts. So you can see the white parts of our texture here. Those, that's going to be the part that remains on our surface. And the black part is going to be masked out. Okay, so let's go ahead and throw that in. And you'll see, cool, we have this kind of, you know, um, blended texture. Uh, so we've already blended two textures together using the uh, decal tool. So with this one, what we can do is we can go into, whoops, we can go into uh, tweak here as well and enable this. And we can uh, kind of see a little bit of the uh, differences here that we can mess around with. Again, here's a normal intensity. Okay, so you can really increase or flatten that uh, that surface okay so it looks more like paint instead of concrete and then we can increase the normal intensity to give us more of a uh, appearance like that and uh, let's go a little further down here there's roughness and metallic we're not going to mess around with those too too much um, the height we can kind of uh, show a little bit here as well uh, luminosity um, and the contrast again very similar to uh, if you increase the uh, contrast you're going to kind of extrude it a little bit more from the surface luminosity okay and the mask okay we're not going to worry about the mask uh, again you can increase luminosity to maximum value so everything just turns white and you can slowly slowly blend that in if you want all right now the one cool thing we have in this uh little section here uh with the close down tweak in our decal two we now have our decal one rather we have a weight section because this is the first blending okay so we can decrease the base color and everything will go back to normal. You can take, around, take off the normal, and we basically have our original wall here. So this is the blending amount. So we're kind of how much weight we're putting on the second uh, decal, otherwise known as decal one in this case. You can increase the normal and height and ambient occlusion and all that stuff. The opacity will just kind of, you know, mess around with that. So, I mean, that's really uh, all, all there is to the weight section. So let's, let's continue on to uh, the decal two section here. So we now have uh, two textures blended together using our decal. We have room for three more. So let's go ahead and get, get to work on that. So the next one I'm going to add is a door, actually. Okay, we're going to throw a door on there. And uh, so I'm going to go into my base color here. And uh, we'll go into our door folder here. And there's a door diffuse. And you can see it'll take up the entire wall, which is not what we want. But I'm going to show you how to fix that in just a moment. Let's just throw in the normal map and the roughness there as well. You can see our roughness is going to be fairly black because it's more of a metallic door. Okay, so when you have a darker roughness map, it's going to show more of the metallic surface. Okay, so now the way we fix this is we go into uh, transform in this case. Okay, so transform, we go to enable, and what we want to do is scale it down. Just like, uh, like this to maybe this level right here, a little bit smaller. And then we want to take down the width as well. So let's bring it to something like this, like a normal door height and then we can uh, use the vertical sliders and horizontal sliders to kind of uh, place it right on the bottom there and we'll bring it a little bit over to the side here um, and you can use this, these little up and down arrows there as well to get more accurate movement all right and uh, so there's a, the transform if you disable this enable it's going to go back to normal there so you want to make sure you have that enable uh, retained on there and we can go to tweak and enable that we can you know mess around with the uh, the color of the door if we wanted to we could uh, increase or decrease the normal intensity all right yeah, make it a more smoother surface or make it a bit more uh, scratchy uh, a bit more bumpy on the on the surface there and you can see it's fairly metallic you can see the specular highlights glistening off the metal surface there so we can you know take down our roughness and make it even more metallic uh, the metallic if we increase the luminosity you can see the result there okay so um, you can mess around with that and find the ideal balance that you want. Again, if I just uh, decrease luminosity here and I use my forward slash key, you can see the light kind of reflecting off the uh, 
the surface of the door there, okay? Get those gl glistening sections on the door. Okay, just to kind of demonstrate the metallicness of, of the door there. Uh, okay, so let's go back in here and uh, let's throw in some uh, a bit more height here. Okay, so I'm going to go down to the height map, okay? And if we take a look at the edge of the door here, we can, if we, uh, not, not that one, the height here, we can increase the contrast and kind of extrude it a bit more from the, from the side of the, uh, of the wall there. Just create that illusion of depth, okay? And then you can adjust the luminosity value to tweak it even further, okay? So just get, you, you know, get, a, get a nice extrusion of that door there. So it looks more like an actual door and less like a you know, painted on door. And I think that uh, surface will do just fine. Maybe I'll uh, just uh, make it a little bit thinner there. It seems to be kind of fat. All right, just throw that down to like, there you go. All right, cool. So that's, you know, just adding in, uh, that, that, that's using a transform section. Okay, so once we're all finished with uh, decal 2, the door and everything, let's move on to decal 3. And this time I'm going to show you how to use an opacity map to create transparency in your uh, surface. So let's go to decal 3. I'm going to load up the base color here. This time we're going to go into a different folder. We're going to go into the window folder here. And we have a bunch of maps we want to add here. And like before, they're going to just add to the main, you know, a big big bad uh, image right on the middle of our uh, uh, surface here. So let's go ahead and... Uh, Transform that again, just use enable, and we're going to just uh, scale it down a little bit and to about, uh, you know, that size looks okay. And uh, the width, we can maybe tone that down a slight bit and just bring it over to the side here uh, a little bit more, maybe over here and just a little bit up. Yeah, there we go. Okay, I'll just leave it right there. So let's load in the rest of our maps now. So the normal map. We have right here, and there's also a uh, roughness map, I believe. Uh, yep, we have the windows rough there. I'm not sure if there's a metallic map. Uh, nope. This one here is the mask. So let's go ahead and load that in, because this is going to be basically get rid of the uh, little white border on the outside there. Let's go ahead and do that. There we go. So now, now we no longer have the unsightly white border there. Um, we also want to, in this case, load in the ambient occlusion, I believe. Yep, ambient occlusion we have here. And there's also a displacement map, the height map. Let's load that in there. Okay. And then we ha also have the opacity map. So the opacity map is right here. I'm going to uh, preview this real quick. You can see we have a little bit of grayish area, a little bit of kind of like frosty area. And this is going to create a semi-transparent uh, opacity, which is pretty cool. Kind of like a frosted window type effect. So let's go ahead and uh, load that opacity channel in. And once we do that, boom, we can see right through this thing here. And we can see on the other side, we have a little angel statue and a plant there. If you go on the other side like this, now you can see I placed that strategically to give you a little surprise there so we can see. Um, now, notice that on the back side of this plane, uh, our uh, material doesn't show up. And that's because currently we only have a one-sided material. So if we go up, if we want to make it two-sided, uh, we can go up here and just select two-sided. And it'll show it on the other side. So this is what it'll look like on the other side with less lighting and stuff, but uh, this is what it looks like from the side that we are working with. We'll just go ahead and uh, disable that for now. We don't really need to worry about it. Okay, let's take a look at our uh, window here. There's a couple things we can tweak. Um, the first thing I want to go ahead and tweak is, uh, let's go here to tweak and enable, and I want to change the contrast on my height map, and that'll basically allow us to extrude a little bit, a little bit from the uh, surface. Oops, I have the wrong thing selected. Where are we here? Yes, okay. So we have our height map right here. Let's go ahead and uh, extrude that a little bit. There we go. Okay, not sure what happened there. All right, so we can extrude that from the surface or kind of really embed it in there. So that's kind of the really cool thing about uh, the height maps. You can really create some cool displacement like this and just bring your uh, window so it appears like it's sticking out a little bit. Okay, and you can adjust the opacity and everything like that of the window, but uh, we're not going to worry about that. I just wanted to, kind of wanted to show you that cool uh, uh, adjustment of the contrast on your height map to kind of create a bit more of an extrusion from the uh, surface. All right, you can see it's uh, adjusting that one right there. Okay, so let's move on to our uh, final decal here, decal number four. And uh, this is going to be a regular little poster here that we're going to load in. So I'm going to go to my base color here. This one's pretty simple. Uh, poster, we have a this one right here. Again, first thing we're going to do is just transform it, uh, the size, the scale, and everything. Let's bring the scale way down. 
something like that'll do. And maybe take this down a tiny bit. Rodeo. And we'll just throw it a little bit over here to the side of the window. And here we can also rotate it. So we can rotate it to the side so it looks like it's kind of just plastered on there real quick. And um, let's zoom in a little bit on it there. And I want to kind of create a kind of a tattered edge to this poster. So I'm going to be using the mask tool for that. I'm going to just go look at my mask channel there and uh, load in this uh, mask there. It's going to kind of get rid of all of those edges there. And we also have a normal map for the poster here, right here. And it's going to kind of give us a little bit of a, a texture there. And then we can go ahead and load in our last map here, right? I think it's the roughness map. We'll just go ahead and throw that in there. Just make it look a little bit uh, rougher there. We can again customize that a little bit later on as well. Um, but there you go. So we have thrown in all that stuff. Um, we can tweak the transform uh, values. We can tweak all the other values here as well. So uh, let's increase the normal intensity a bit. We get a bit more of a uh, nice uh, weathered surface like that there. And, uh, you know, increasing or decreasing the, uh, the roughness and luminosity, we can make it a bit uh, shinier or, or rougher, more like a laminated appearance. Can't really notice too much, but uh, we do have that roughness map there as well. And uh, again, you can blend it into the uh, previous surface if you want. If you go to weight, uh, take the base color off, we can just basically, you know, make it invisible or, you know, kind of have it faded in like that. The normal, we can kind of have it more, you know, uh, embedded into the uh, the surface so it may look like a spray paint instead of a poster or something like that so you know there's a, t there's a ton of different things you can uh, a ton of different options you can use for this we take down the height map we can kind of uh, make it a bit more weathered into the surface there as well so you know keep keep that in mind you can adjust the, uh, the weight values as well for this all right so what you want to do once you've finalized all your positioning and all your materials and all your tweaking and everything like that is you want to go ahead and bake your texture and you also want to make sure you change your output size from 1024 to 2048, okay? Because this is going to give you a bit of a better resolution. Uh, you'll be able to see the difference right there. And we get a lot more uh, fine detail on our surface by doing that. It's generally recommended to keep a lower resolution, lower output size when you're doing the tweaking and stuff, just to, because it moves along a bit faster. Uh, but when, you, when you're finished everything, you can go ahead and modify it to 2048 by 2048. And then finally, to uh, to finalize the uh, save on system resources video memory, you can go ahead and bake your substance texture. So you can go up here and you can actually bake individual channels by selecting them and going to bake substance texture. Or you can just go up here to edit and bake all the substance textures in the entire project. And that's going to save you some video memory. So you can see right now it's at uh, video memory 2.0. And it may actually increase once the baking is finished. And you'll see it'll go to actually 2.1 right there. So what we need to actually do is go down here uh, to our uh, substance, substance section again here. We need to uh, select Activate. And then we need to delete the actual uh, SPSAR file in here. And once we do that, we'll go back down to uh, 2.0 or even 1.9 there. So we've actually saved you know, 0.1 gigabyte of system resources. But uh, when you have a lot of substances in your project, uh, a ton of them, and you bake all the substances, it'll save you a ton of memory in the long term. So yeah, that's about all there is to it, guys. Thanks so much for watching. Make sure you check out our other uh, YouTube tutorials on our Substance Super Tools content pack and all the separate tools that we have in that. And uh, make sure you check out our forums at forum.reillusion.com. And I shall see you in the next video.